Today we're going to be talking about this pen. It was sent to me by Sebastian Schweitzer. Now, back in the day, I have reviewed another pen by Sebastian, uh, and although I like that pen uh, quite a bit, I, I do think that his craftsmanship has been evolving, and I thought it was interesting to check out some of his newer work. So here we have uh, one of his pens. Now, Sebastian, I was unable to find a website for him, so you have to check out his work on Instagram. I'm going to leave it at that. I'll put a link to his work below. I don't have a website. I don't have an email address. I don't have a phone number. As I just said, through Instagram, you can contact him, check out his work, and purchase his pens if you want to do that. A very kind thank you to Sebastian for sending me this. I'm going to review it. I'm going to cover the parts of this pen. I'll do a writing sample and I'll tell you what I like and what I don't like about it. Let's get started. Okay, so here we go with this uh, pen by Sebastian Schweitzer. Um, comes in this cute little box, has a cardboard outer sleeve and then there is the actual pen. Uh, it also came with a box of five Pelican long cartridges, so this is the uh, standard international long, right? Which is a, I always like, nice, nice size. Because they have a good capacity, and actually these, which is interesting, they have a bigger capacity than most converters do. So that's kind of interesting if you're in the market for something that's refillable for pens that don't necessarily take a converter or whatever. Anyway, this black thing, this is part of my uh, camera tripod. Please forgive me, but I couldn't angle the camera better today for some reason. Okay, here we have the Schweitzer pen. I'm going to zoom in a bit, and now you don't see the tripod anymore. Everybody happy? And this is a Pilot Metropolitan. And as you can see, the Sebastian Schweitzer pen here is a large pen. I probably shouldn't be keep calling it Sebastian Schweitzer. It is Schweitzer Feine Schreibgeräte, or Fine Writing Instruments. Let's have a look at this pen. So we have on top here diamond wood. Uh, then we have this very nice turquoise acrylic with a lot of chatoyants. Very nice effect. And we have some wood, some acrylic, acrylic, wood, and some acrylic. This may look like one center band, but you'll be able to tell if you look closely that it's actually not. This is where the barrel opens up. And as you can see, the converter fits in very deeply into this pen. I'll be a little careful because it is inked. Normal Schmidt converter, but goes very deeply into the pen. And yes, these are quite a lot of threads. I'll come back to those. And then here we have the cap. It unscrews. We have a section which is large. This is a big and in my mind very comfortable section very minor and smooth step down on the section which I think is really quite nice uh, and then we have this 18k uh, double broad gold nib uh, and of course the threads here at the front these are the threads that keep the cap in place um, interesting to put them in the front because that means that you don't feel any threads as you hold the section the downside of course is that if you dip this in ink there will be ink in the threads I'll come to that we have here uh, a gold bock nib. This is a number six nib with a plastic feed. This happens to be a double broad, but uh, they are sold with extra fine, fine medium broad or double broad. And I think that is pretty much all I have to say about the pen. So why don't we see how the pen writes? I am going to zoom out a little bit well, actually, I don't have to zoom out that much, I think. Let's see what we can do. So what we have here is Schweitzer Feine Schreibgeräte. Uh, I don't believe this pen has a particular model. Uh, sorry, a model name. It's just a pen by this brand. Uh, we are talking about, oops, an 18K double broad nib and the ink, I want to say is Royal Flush Blue, 
Uh, this is made by Fountain Pen Revolution. Okay, let's do some writing. This is a pretty nice nib. I have found that it is a little prone to skipping. Now, because it's a double broad, it's a little bit stub-like in nature. So you do have to make sure you align it properly to the paper. It is, I find, quite on the wet side. It's just that it is a little bit prone to skipping, especially on very smooth paper. These are things that can be fixed. Um, often the very broad nibs do tend to be a little bit over polished. Anyway, a bit of fast writing. I'm not trying to gloss over it. It's of course important that your pen also writes. What I'm trying to say is I'm willing to bet that a finer nib would not have done this. I think it's because it's a double broad. That's specifically what I requested. Um, but really quite wet. Now as I said, as you can tell here, this is no pressure. There definitely is that, so there was a skip there, that somewhat italic character to the writing, right? A, a, a wider downstroke, a narrower side stroke. But a lot of fun. Um, is there flex? As always, very careful. Uh, there is some softness to this nib, absolutely. And I think one of that inclination could milk that a little bit. It's not a flex nib though, so please bear that in mind. Reverse writing, always interesting um, with a somewhat stubby nib. It can be done, it gets a little finer, it also runs dry. So this is not really one to write upside down with. Maybe if you make the nib a little wetter, then that could be done. Overall, larger pen, and sorry, what I forgot to show you was it does actually post, and it is really quite big when posted but it is also really quite comfortable. Large section, a lot of space to grab it, a very smooth tapered step down from the barrel, and you don't feel any threads because they're up there, and because the section flares out a little bit, your fingers don't slip onto those threads. So I do find it a very comfortable pen to use. Oops, I was rubbing a lot of skin oil on that piece of page, I think. So, a bit of skipping. Let's discuss what I like, what I don't like about the pen. And let's do that now. What do I like, what do I not like about this pen? I, I think there are a couple of things that I, I really do like. The, the desert iron wood is a, a type of wood that, that I have really liked. I have had a... Um, I had two actually, buck, I remember buck knives, a 110 and a 112 that had a diamond wood, had diamond wood scales in the grips and I thought it was very attractive, it's a very nice dark wood. So that I really like. I like the, uh, the, the materials used. Um, I think this, this turquoise acrylic is very pretty, I think the diamond hardwood is very pretty and we'll come back to that in just a second. The pen is comfortable to use. I find it it's a larger pen and I find it to be a very pleasant section. Uh, the step down is very nicely made and it makes in my mind for a very comfortable larger pen uh, that even posts very comfortably. So if you are in the market for a, a bigger pen that's a little, a little different and all I mean by that is it is handmade, right? A little different from the you know, the Lamy Safaris and the Pilot Metropolitans of the world, which also are more affordable, I know that. But if you're looking for something that you can customize too, because you can talk to Sebastian about specific wishes that you have, then I think this is definitely not a bad pen to consider. Okay, things I don't like so much. Um, one thing that I, I noticed um, as I was using it is that because of the way the barrel is created, it's, it's threaded down there, right, as I've, I've pointed out in the, earlier in the video, um, as opposed to a more typical position there. What I have found is that sometimes I found myself holding 
the barrel a bit more uh, sort of lower down and then trying to uncap the pen and instead of uncapping it I just unscrew the entire barrel. Uh, is that a big deal? A little bit because you want to unscrew your pen. Now, of course simple solution is to just hold it a bit more highly and there's no problem whatsoever. So I would by no means say that's a deal breaker. Uh, you can also probably screw it in a little bit more tightly and don't have that issue. It's just something to be aware of and some people I know are, are driven more or less insane by, by those kinds of things. So there, there is that. Um, I'm just looking at my notes, sorry. One thing I will say is that these threads, because they're all the way at the front, the big advantage of that is you don't feel them, right? You do not feel them as you hold the, the section anywhere. The disadvantage is they collect ink. So if you do fill up your pen with a converter by dipping the whole section into the ink, you are going to get some ink in the threads and that can be a little complicated to clean. I typically just make a tissue a little wet and that just squeeze it in and that, that does it. Of course the simple solution is to just take out the converter entirely, fill that up directly from a bottle of ink. The only problem with that uh, is that then you don't prime the feed and it may take a little bit of fiddling to get the pen to write. Having said that, you could use cartridges, you could do other things. As I said, you can fill up the, the, car, the, sorry, the converter directly from the bottle of ink. Uh, none of this is insurmountable. It's just a little bit more cleaning work as you use it. Uh, the final thing I will say is I, I think that I personally would prefer a pen that is either entirely wood or largely wood and or a pen that is entirely acrylic. I'm not sure if the mix of the acrylic and the wood uh, really works for me, but having said that, this is of course a personal choice and the nice thing about working with someone who makes pens is that you can specify what you want. One, of course, advantage of this combination is that dipping wood in ink tends to stain it, right? So I, I fully understand the section. Um, but these are things that you can discuss, right? You can discuss that with the pen maker and see if something can be done, for example, making more wooden parts or making a wooden cap, etc. In all, I think it's a well-made pen. I also think that the price is fair. It's by no means a cheap pen, but you also have to take into account it is a handmade product and it does come with an 18 karat nib so in all that does increase the price right this is not something made by a machine that makes 500,000 of these a day uh, it's it's a handmade product so from that perspective i do think that the the price is fair so in all i think it's a very nice pen um if you're looking for something that is a bit it's a bit more custom, it's, it's a bit different from the, the, the quote-unquote run-of-the-mill pens and I think this is a very interesting pen maker to check out. That's it. A very kind thank you to Sebastian for sending me the pen. I really appreciate it. I hope this was useful and um, I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye.